one fascinating thing you said is uh, that blew my mind, and we went right past it, uh, which is the temperature is a really powerful. Like, if you were to think about the ways that different parts of the body, different systems in the, in the body, would communicate with each other, temperature would be a really good one. And that just, I mean, maybe it's obvious, but it kind of blew my mind just now that, yeah, these systems are all distributed. Right. And they have to kind of, they're not actually sending signals, but they're coordinating. They need some sort of universal thing to look at in order to coordinate. And temperature is a nice one to to uh, to build around. And that way, you can control the behavior of all these different systems by controlling the temperature. Right. It, it's attractive to think of a mechanism where this master circadian clock secretes a peptide or something that goes and locks to receptors in all the cells and gets it just right. But that leaves far too much room for variability, binding affinities, cells in a lot of parts of our body are at different stages of maturation. They're turning over liver cells and so forth. And for instance, our we have a clock in our gut and in our liver. It, such that if we were just take out your liver and put it on a table and just look at the expression of these genes, it would be in a 24 hour oscillation on its own. It's independent, but something has to entrain them and keep them all synchronized. And so it's not obvious that it would be temperature. Takahashi's great gift to biology was to show that all the stuff coming out of this master circadian clock at the end of the day, that's a weird statement, no pun intended. At the, <laughs> at the end of the day and the night, at, at, the, um, at the end of the story, it all boils down to making sure that the temperature of tissues oscillates in the same fashion. It's blowing my mind and thinking like what other mechanism could possibly exist to create that kind of oscillation. Well, in, uh, you're, you're Russian, it's cold in Russia for a lot of the year. The hibernation signal in certain animals is a remarkable signal. There are peptides secreted from this very same clock that in animals like ground squirrels or bears, they go into a kind of a torpor where everything, reproduction, metabolism, everything is reduced while they're in their cave. They don't actually stay asleep all of winter. That's a myth. Um, and they actually do these very... Um, dramatic and periodic arousals from hibernation where they just shake and shake and shake. It looks like a seizure. And then they go back under into the torpor. That's from a peptide that's released. But that's different because that's about shutting down the whole system. It's clear that having these very regular oscillations every 24 hours is essential for everything from metabolism to reproduction. Is there uh, an optimal temperature for sleep that I, I should mention I think your latest episode, uh, you uh, and people should go check out helixsleep.com slash Huberman to support Andrew. Uh, Thanks for the plug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, the, the amazing thing about the stuff that you're creating, and, oh, and yes, you have a new podcast. That's amazing. And this past month, you did a whole series on sleep, which uh, people should definitely check out. There's some podcasts that come out uh, that just make me want to be a better human being by just the quality. Uh, Three Blue One Brown, Grant Sanderson is like that for me. Just like, wow, this is uh, education is best. So Andrew uh, symbolizes that and captures that brilliantly. So go support the sponsor so he doesn't stop doing the thing. Uh, so they, I think they have a cooling pad too. So I, uh, uh, Eight Sleep Mattress uh, sponsors me. Uh, they've been they sent me a mattress and it's been, I've never, listen, I used to sleep on the floor. Sleep not, where you fall. Sleep where I fall. Yeah. I don't give a shit. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. But so like, I would have never bought a, a nice mattress because <laughs> it's like, why? I'm fine. This is the floor. It's fine. But it was a game changer to uh, be able to control temperature. Like for me, it's cooling. Mm -hmm. To cool, I don't know what the hell it is. Well, you want the brain and nervous system and the rest of the body needs to drop by about anywhere from two to three degrees in order to get into your deepest sleep and transition to sleep. That's really gonna help. You don't wanna be cold that you're bothered and can't fall asleep, but that's why some people like it really cold in the room and under a warm blanket or with socks on for some people. That can, that can be good because this temperature oscillation is such that as your temperature is dropping, that correlates with the generally with the most sleepy phase of your circadian cycle. So cool is better for falling and staying asleep and sleeping deeply.
And then I, I guess like that's what eight sleep showed. They have like an app is uh, it warms back up uh, to wake you up. The idea that I haven't actually used it. I'm like, this is stupid. Uh, it, uh, people say it works, but I just keep it the same temperature throughout the night. But uh, uh, warming it up, I guess, wakes you up, which is which is fascinating. Yeah, because uh, you're, the wake up signal is it, it's interesting to think about. It's not just correlated with an increase in body temperature. The increase in body temperature is triggering the release of cortisol from your adrenals, and that's the wake up signal. Do you think it's absolute temperatures we're talking about? Or is it just even relative? Just even just the decrease? Well, everyone's going to have slightly different basal temperature. The idea that everybody should be ninety eight point six. I mean, that's a myth. And there are the theories that body temperature overall has been dropping in the last 50 years or so. I, I, I doubt that's true for somebody who is athletic like you and is you know young and healthy. But basically the, the coldest period of that 24 hour cycle is when you are going to be sleepiest. There's actually a period within that 24 hour cycle. It's a, it's a time point called your temperature minimum. And your temperature minimum tends to be about two hours before your typical wake up time. I'm not talking about the wake up time in the middle of the night where you go use the bathroom or where you set an alarm to go catch a flight. I mean, if you were to just allow yourself to sleep without a clock for a few days, measure when you typically wake up, two hours before then is your temperature minimum. And that temperature minimum turns out to be a very important landmark in your circadian cycle because it turns out that if you get bright light in your eyes in the hours immediately before your temperature minimum, so two to four hours or any time within the two or four hour window before that temperature minimum, you are going to what's called delay your circadian clock. The next day, mm -hmm. that whole oscillation is gonna move forward. It'll make you wanna go to sleep later and wake up later. Whereas if you get bright light in your eyes in the hours after that temperature minimum, so let's say for me, typical wake up time is 6 a.m. My temperature minimum somewhere around 4 a.m. If I get bright light in my eyes, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., it's going to advance that oscillation so that I wanna go to bed earlier and wake up earlier the subsequent nights. So you might say, wait, but most nights I go to sleep and wake up at more or less the same time. Why is that? And that's because the same thing is happening on both sides. You are both advancing your clock a little bit and assuming that you're looking at light in the evening, you're also delaying your clock a little bit. So you get kind of captured in between and then your rhythm more or less oscillates at the, at the same period, as we say, as the spin of the earth. Unless you're like you where you're, yeah, I get text messages from you sometimes at odd <laughs> hours. And I'm, I, if you're on the East Coast, then I know that you had to have been pulling